There are two uh, two players, uh, player one and player two, who are playing 50 rounds of bingo. Uh, you know, there are different styles. I have kind of researched the the topics. There is American bingo, there is European bingo. So this is the this so-called European bingo with uh, a maximum of 90 balls, and uh, the they they have tickets. Uh, so in America they have cards. Uh, there are different, a little different uh, rules there. But in Europe there are tickets, and each ticket has three lines, as you see here. The first line is over here. That's uh, that contains numbers five through the 31, 42, 66, and 87. The second line is over here, and the third one is over there. And the same goes for ticket two. So what happens during the bingo game? Um, the balls are being drawn out of. Uh, the machine and uh, here is the sequence. So in game one, uh, initially it was the number 54, then it was number 67, number 80 and so on and so on. So the key goal for the players would be to go to the to the back of this uh, of this uh, table and to see which number was drawn in order to complete uh, at first one line. Okay, then so, two lines. so they have to put they have to put the last number in yes. those orange columns and that's the result that they need to come up with yeah exactly that's that's okay. the result and there's a little hint so basically you should be getting like all these uh, answers sh like should be somewhere contained on these two tickets so if you somehow manage to get num to get let's say number eight uh, on the back uh, as the answer uh it clearly does not no it does belong over here but like if it's let's say number for example number 60 which does not belong to any of these cards that's a clear indication of a mistake so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and by the way uh you might use some different logic different formulas over here to uh, calculate for one line to cal calculate for two lines or the whole game and uh, the points will also be given, like uh, there will be a little bit more points for calculating two lines. My impression was that it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you'll need to understand which ticket was uh, the first to, to get these two lines. So, okay. yeah. Great, all right. Must, guys, be, uh, any... must be just about time to start the timer. Yeah, uh, any questions, guys, uh, before we start, like about the rules, about the case? Are you clear what we need to do? Okay. Okay. All right then, Daniel. I think you should be you should be the one who starts the, the countdown. Okay. On your marks, get set, go. All right. You have ten minutes from now to complete the case. The fantastic thing about this is that we are going to get to see their screens. So Tim and I will be uh, able to have a look at your screens and show it to. All of the viewers will be able to see exactly what technique and what strategies they are using to uh, to complete this model. So, okay, we are over uh, on to, uh, yeah, all right, this is um, Willem's screen. Yeah, and this is interesting because the first thing that Willem has done, um, you may notice, is actually insert a bunch of columns to the left-hand side of the data set. Um, this, this is an interesting move. I, I actually expected that everyone would scroll across the, the right-hand side um, because one one thing that Daniel um, I noticed when we were looking at the uh, looking at this case study and it came up, there are a whole bunch of merged cells everywhere, which plays havoc with your ability to navigate around your spreadsheet. Um, a lot of the shortcuts that uh, professional models will use, control left, right, up, and down, uh, really break down when you've got uh, merged cells. And so not needing to navigate all the way to the right-hand side, really great idea. Yes, it's, uh, it's, this is amazing. I knew that this, that this would be the case, so that they come up with something completely different to what I would have done. Um, I would have you know, naturally gone to the right-hand side. And as Tim mentioned, uh, yeah, the shortcuts is uh, it's going to be quite difficult to, to use shortcuts in merge cells. So each of those circles that you can see that look like uh, bingo balls are actually numbers that have been entered into the cell, but the cell is, is merged. So it makes it just a little bit more difficult to work with. And that circle is just a, uh, it's, it's just a shape over the top. So they're able to actually use the, uh, the cell as the number. Um, are we able to uh, to zoom in a little bit so that we can see the um, the formula that they're using? I 
I think that's controlled by the uh, by the participants, unfortunately. Right. So we'll have to yeah. make a note for everyone else to uh, increase the size of the formula bar. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think we, we might be able to make some headway. It's always going to be a little bit difficult with some of the international participants as well because uh, formula are in different languages as, as well. It's not it's not always in English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can have a look at what's, uh, what JP is currently doing, because uh, he might have a different approach. Let's yeah. see what's on the other screen there. Okay. Oh, so JP has actually created an entirely new spreadsheet to try and work this out. This is a very different approach to it. So it looks and... like he's actually copied all the data out of the uh, main spreadsheet, uh, and he's cleaning it up by removing the merge cells. Again, a fairly novel approach to uh, tackling the merge cell problem. Well, I've got to say, that's usually my first strategy. Whenever I see a merge cell, I just get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, not a bad move. Yeah, I mean, guys, uh, the, the logic for these merge cells here was uh, purely about design. Uh, well, that was first thing. And then it was like, actually a nice test, test or a nice challenge of the participant skills because, uh, like, for example, imagine you, you're working without a mouse. Like, you will not be able to navigate quickly without a mouse over here. So mm -hmm. if you need to understand how to work with merge cells, how to you know remove them, how to overcome these obstacles. So the worst is the quality of the uh, initial data that you get in your daily work. Uh, the more you're still actually prepared for these types of cases. But at the end of the day, it's visually quite attractive. And let's see how the guys uh, do there. So far, it's yes. nil nil. Very important to be able to uh, to handle those those merge cells. Um, actually, I can see some people are trying to download the case. Now, I do believe this uh, case is available. It should be available now on the FMWC FM World Cup com website. Uh, I do believe there's a couple of the cases are available for free and some of them are available for purchase. So if you'd like to uh, follow along and see these cases for yourself, you can download these on the uh, Financial Modeling World Cup website. So have a look at, at, at an interesting approach for uh, for JP. He's putting together all these uh, lines one after another, and I expect him to be writing some sort of formulas uh, next to them. Uh, actually, what he's just done, uh, what he just did, he has uh, removed the merged cells. He has uh, put together the whole line of uh, numbers in a more conditional, in a more, let's say, uh, custom format uh, that we're all uh, you know used to be looking at. Now he's writing these formulas. There is a huge problem for him that's, that's going to be coming up uh, after he has received these results. And I imagine these results will be uh, correct. He will have hard time to fill them in into the answer tab because uh, it's actually, uh, again, that contains the uh, merged cells. So we have to, after unmerging the cells, he will have to merge them again uh, or try to find some ways to overcome these, these, uh, these ideas. Uh, right now, uh, JP is using an index match formula or an X match formula, actually. X match, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So to get the numbers, uh, like this, the sequence of each of these uh, numbers in each line, uh, and after he does that, I imagine he will be probably looking for the maximum number in each line so that the line is completed, and we'll be comparing them. So that's a good approach, and he has four and a half minutes yet to to work. I believe he's on the right track. He's going to need to use all of that 140 APM that he's uh, currently uh, pushing out there at the moment. Um, so this is a new feature that we've got uh, for this uh, this uh, financial modeling World Cup round. Um, you may notice in the right hand side of your screen there's an APM monitor um, where we can see how frantic are the participants uh, working at any point in time. Um, so you can see JP is sort of peaked at about 185 and he's currently hovering at around 150 to 160 right now. We'd love to go over to check out Willem to see how he's going and uh, A, how's the solution and B, um, how busy is he at the moment? So straight away I can see his APM is way up there at 227, at, you know, 200, he's pushing 200 right at the moment, um, which probably seems to be probably more keyboard oriented rather than mouse oriented. But um, right, let's see how he's going here. So it looks like, uh, as far as I can tell, um, he seems to have put formally in place uh, and he's matching it up um, you know, row for row for each of the uh, two player tickets. Um, I think he's probably used a similar sort of system using that match system. Uh, so let's uh, let's see what he's uh, coming up with as the answers. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably it's going to be uh, the first person who gets the uh, who gets at least some sort of answers. Probably going to win. And let's see how it's uh, 
Some yeah, more. we went, we've got we're down to we're down to the last three minutes, and when they complete the first uh, part, we'll see it pop up on the screen at the bottom. So at the moment, neither of them have scored any points just yet. So and you know, yeah, go. I also wanted like this kind of pressure Ooh. where it's like two Willem. and a half left. It's yeah. Willem has scored the first five points. Wow. Okay. Great. That's. Well, that, that, that's a huge lead, actually, for now, where it's 15 mm. for him. Okay, wow. So probably See, this, is an interesting, this is an interesting thing. I was actually wondering, how is Willem actually going to use uh, this system to populate, uh, what is it, 50 games or 90 games that we're, that we're looking at at the moment? Um, that's actually going to be quite challenging. The structure that he's used doesn't lend itself to simply just copy and paste down the page. So this is actually going to be a challenge for uh, his approach of doing it. It looks like he's going to be uh, using some sort of uh, some sort of uh, data tables approach. Could that be the case here? Because uh, well, he's, he has sold for the first 15 points. That's that's okay, but uh, he won't be able to capitalize on that. So. Because uh, basically, the, the whole case there is designed so that, like, if you solve for for one case, uh, let's say for for the for one line in, in game one, you should be able to very easy, uh, uh, you know, uh, copy these uh, numbers and get the points for uh, for all the other uh, 49 games. And by the way, uh, at this point, when there are a couple of last minutes left, and you're still, you know, I, I've been there in their shoes. I've been competing in Modula for uh, like uh, seven years. I've been a finalist twice, uh, finishing uh, as high as uh, number five in 2017 New York finals. And this is, uh, you know, it, it builds some pressure when you know that it's like 56 seconds left, and you just don't really know uh, will you be able to manage uh, to complete your formula or not. So let's see. I think that William has just uh, completed 20 points. He, he has he has done it. He's he's done it. He's got the full 20 points. And now he needs to uh, he needs to actually uh, you know um, improve that uh, for all the other games. It seems that he he has got the first game right. That that he needs to get it up to the other 20 49 games. Uh, Maybe we can head over and check out what JP is doing and see how close he yeah, is. Yeah, just for the last few seconds. Let's see how JP did. So. It looks like JP's calculated all the results that he's looking for, um, but he, now he needs to get them in, over into his output spreadsheet. Oh. And he's, a, he's got five seconds left off, goodness. Oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be so yeah. short. Yeah. All uh, right. And that's it. Okay. Uh, all right, so the winner of that was uh, was Willem. Fantastic. This was one where, uh, I don't know if it's a shortcut, but it really wasn't all that much more difficult or work to, to solve for one lines, two lines, or three lines. For those not familiar with this question, um, you've got the order of uh, 90 balls being drawn. I've collapsed some columns in there, but you've got 90 balls being drawn. The number's one through 90. Uh, and you've got these cards and your object is either to, as the balls are drawn, you mark off if you got that number. And the first person to get a complete horizontal row, and it could be either row one, row two, or row three. But the first person to get one horizontal row, and player one and player two, wins the you know one line uh, game. The first person to get two horizontal rows marked off wins the two lines game, and the first person to get their entire ticket marked off wins the, the three lines game. Um, and I'll just zoom out. I, I dealt with this really kind of all doing all at, at once. I First, I just moved the data of the tickets into something that didn't involve merge cells or gaps. Um, and then I just gave that the name, the defined name ticket one, and this is the defined name ticket two. And then my work was, was really over here and it was really just a couple of formulas. Um, you know, this looks within um, basically all of the rows of ticket one. Um, sorry, that looks through row one of ticket one. So row number one, all of the columns. So that'll be the five cells that make up um, the top here, 5, 13, 42, 
6687. And I'm getting five different numbers, which is equal basically through one through 90, but doubled. And it's track one, the reason it's doubled is because of all the merch cells. So that 127 would correspond to the 64th number drawn. Um, it's finding, yeah, the sort of one up to 180 of where the ball drawn matched the ticket um, and what's the largest one of those. So that tells me it was the 64th ball drawn or the 127th column of this uh, of, of this group of cells that completed row one, the player one. You know, you do the same for row two, the same for row three, the player one. Do the same over here for player two. Sort those three numbers, which is just a quick small or a sort function would have done it as well, now that I think of it. Um, and then you just compare this number to that number to see who won the, the one line game and where it was. Um, and you can see I'm comparing those two numbers. 101 is the minimum. Where is 101 found within this? It's found at the um, 14. Well, it was ball number 14. So it's looking at what is the 101st position within this whole group of 180 cells. The 101st position, which is the 52nd ball drawn, uh, 51st ball drawn, sorry. And you can see that's 14, that's the 51st ball drawn. And that's what gets recorded as, as the answer. What ball was the ball drawn that completed somebody for winning the one line game? Um, so I don't know if I would say this was a clever shortcut, I'd say it's just the way, um, but there was really no extra difficulty in determining these answers versus these answers versus these answers. It was all uh, equal, so to speak. Uh, 